What up, gorillas? Make sure you drop your new life in the comments below. Manifest it because we win together around here and freedom bubbers. So, I figured while I'm on this hour long car drive to go to the airport to go to Texas, that I am going to talk to you guys about my life, how I got to where I am, and how I became a full time content creator, fitness, mindset, mindset fitness, and nutrition. Okay? So, I'm going to start with my wins in the last six months and tell you guys where I was at just a year and a half ago. So, you can see. If you take your life serious, the things that it can actually do for you if you apply pressure in life. So they always talk about progressive overload in the gym. You also want to progressive overload your life. And this is how I did it. Okay, so within the last six months, I'm getting published in a book. I'm a co-author in a book about faith, and that's like faith in and of yourself or religion or however you want to see it. Wes Watson was my business coach for six months. I hired him for six months. That just came to an end. I left my corporate job in September of 2023. I was making $145,000 a year with my investment plus my business or plus my uh, my corporate job. My corporate job paid me $77,000 plus bonus plus I have other income streams that come in. I left that job and went all in on my coaching. January 1st, I've showed screenshots throughout this time. The first week on New Year's, I had a $17,000 week. Now this is called better by the day because I'm trying to get better in business, finances, fitness, all of that. Networking, growing my Instagram. My Instagram's about to hit 10,000 followers, by the way. It is growing very steadily. It's very close, it's like 800 followers away now. By the time you watch this and come and check out my Instagram by tomorrow, I'll probably be close to that. I have a, a reel that's doing decently well right now that I had just posted this morning that will probably boost me past that. So, with that being said, just a year and a half ago, oh, wait, I've also lost 110 pounds. Just a year and a half ago, I was almost 300 pounds. I was working at a job I absolutely fucking hated. It was understaffed, and underpaid. I was a plant manager, project manager, and pretty much anything else they needed me to be. So I ran a 90,000 square foot chemical plant at the age I started, as I became the plant manager at 26. I did that for almost four years, almost five years. Then it becomes very political past a certain point. They started bringing in Germans. They started getting rid of Americans. I didn't like the person that they brought in. So I decided I'm not going to do this shit no more. I'm going to go be, I was technically my own boss because I was the plant manager, but every boss has another boss. And then even if you own the fucking business, you gotta play political bullshit to appease everyone else. So at that point, the customers are your boss. So, but I wanted to at least be able to control my own destiny, okay? And I asked for a pay raise. I was making 77,000 plus bonus, which a lot of people were like, holy shit, that's a lot of money, but not for the amount of work I was doing. They made me do maintenance because they would never give me a maintenance guy. I was on my own assistant manager because my assistant manager wanted a different job to get an easier job. And I was my own shift lead as well as how to do KPIs, run the plant, work on the floor if I was too short staffed, and make it to every single meeting. So I asked for X amount of money. They wouldn't give it to me. They kept telling me to wait, to wait. They were gonna do a market analysis. There was two different plant manager jobs in my area, anywhere from 120 to 140 plus quarterly bonus plus a work vehicle. I showed them that. They pretty much scoffed in my face. I'm like, all right then, I'm gonna go make $17,000 a month by myself. How about that? So it worked, so they can go fuck themselves. I'm not gonna give the business any any shout outs, but I will tell you, it completely fell apart. As soon as I left, they laid off two shifts. They're short staffed, they can't make enough product, they cut the safety stock too low, a bunch of other things. But that's neither here nor there. I tried to tell them. So now, on to, I was drinking a lot because of that job, hated my life, it was not fun at all, okay? So, this is gonna sound like people are like, you're just bragging about money. Anyone that states money is just lying. You can hit me up in the DMs, you can come and get the receipts from me. I don't really care. I spent $12,500 with Wes on his coaching, and then I did a $10,000 mastermind, which was Eric Spofford, Wes Watson, Mike Rashid, Andy Frisella, and Nick, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's a really good motivational speaker with no arms and legs, but I don't want to butcher his story by saying his name all fucked up. And Birdman. 
and I got to go to dinner with all of them. I sat with Nick and talked to him about my story for like an hour and a half at dinner. I also got to meet Andy Frisella, talk to him. I talked to G DJ for like 35, 40 minutes. I've also been shouted out by C.T. Fletcher. All of this stuff, you can go to C.T. Fletcher's Instagram. You can go look at DJ's Instagram, see that he follows me. C.T. Fletcher follows me. Wes Watson follows me. Ryan Upchurch follows me. So I am steadily growing steam in this community of people. Johnny Shreve follows me. I'm trying to think. Cali Muscle followed me, but then he unfollowed me. I don't know if he's just trying to get more followers. Um, but yeah, those are the things you can accomplish when you start to take your life serious. And what I'm trying to tell you is just a year and a half ago, I was drinking every night, not taking fitness seriously anymore. I've had my fitness business since 2017. I shut it down for almost two years and dove headfirst into the corporate world, absolutely dominated it, then realized it gets too political to ever get to the place you want to unless you play the political games and force vaccines and a lot of other things are just not on my to-do list anymore for a company that will ultimately throw you away if they see fit. I put a month and a half notice in and the lady tried to fire me. She asked my the person that had been there with me, like, do you think we should just let him go today or should we take him up on his offer? I put four years in that place and started at ground level, worked my way all the way up to plant manager. If they would discard me, they'll discard anybody. I'm not saying don't work hard in your business. You know your place. If you work too hard and they don't give you the next promotion or they don't help you out and they just keep giving you broken dreams, find another place to work for. 1,000%. So I had a job offer for 140000 plus bonus. I turned it down because I wanted to chase my dreams. Um, and the reason I can get paid so much is my skill set is I'm a Six Sigma black belt, project manager, agile scrum, human resourcing, plus I did accounting in the Marine Corps. So I have the, the accounting side on my, in my favor for when I was in the Marines. Then I went to school. And then I went to school again to get my ISSA master trainer, which shows that I just did a bunch of research in science and have over six mindset and weight loss certifications. Even though it doesn't technically fit the other field, you can use that kind of stuff to your advantage to show that you're always developing as a person and you take more things serious. And anything science-based can be converted into a lot of math, and then it can be converted into just obviously showing your skill set with Excel, things of that nature. So that's how I ultimately got the other job offer when I was going to leave my job. But I had just started the mastermind, I had just hired Wes, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just pause while I'm trying to do this corporate world shit. And let's see how far this business takes me. And I'm literally on the, air, in the, on the way to the airport right now to go hang out in Texas for a week. And I have the money to support myself and I feed my kids. And it's just a great life. And people that come on the internet and they hate, they're bums. Anyone that says like fitness is not worth it or mindset and discipline is not worth it, you need to have balance. They don't have any balance in real life. If you ever go check out their pages, they look like bums. They have mediocre jobs. They drink and smoke. They have no real money. The average, the average American is overweight, has not even a thousand dollars in a bank account, and then they come on the internet and try to tell people they're wrong about their lives. So, would I recommend Wes as a business coach? Absolutely. This is the thing: people don't work hard enough. There's people like it didn't work for me. It didn't work hard enough, man. How did I get in a room with Andy Frisella because of Wes, and you haven't even left your house? How am I going to Texas because of Wes, but you haven't even left your house? How did I send out 150 DMs on my own every single day, but you didn't even send out 10? How did I put in the work of the blueprint that I was told to do, and then I 10X'd it? How have I had collabs with Stan Efferding, who created the Vertical Diet? How have I had collabs with Clark Bartram? How have I, he's best friends with Michael Hearn. How, how, how am I going to have a collab with Johnny Shreve in March during the Arnold? How do I have multiple collabs lined up coming really soon how am I doing it and you couldn't do it if you hire Wes you might as well use Wes as like hey man I know Wes Watson you can go look he follows me I've actually talked to him hung out with him in person here's a picture would you ever like to do a collab oh yeah sure what's your story here's my story it's that simple I've been on over 30 to 50 podcasts now some big some small just every time I come on and tell my story, someone else finds me, then they invite me on their podcast. And then I've been on doctor's podcast. I've been on tons of things. 
I've been shouted out on CT Fletcher's Instagram. And just a year and a half ago, I was I was just a normal American living the corporate life, falling into the victimhood of uh, being overweight, being excuse driven because my job was too busy. I still went to the gym every day. I just ate like shit and drank my emotions away, which by definition, most people wouldn't even call me an alcoholic, but I think every American is an alcoholic because if you drink to hide your emotions, that in and of itself is a vice. And those are the things that hold a lot of Americans back. And with me being in finance, every single finance book I have ever read, it's clear as day. We don't have a money problem in America. We make well off compared to a lot of other countries. We have a spending problem. And I want to show you guys something in comparison if no one believes me. When I left that job I was talking about, they brought in someone from Spain that worked in the same place as me, but over in Spain. The houses are equivalent to the same price as in Ohio. I made $77,000 a year. They brought him over with an electrical engineering degree, and in Spain, he makes $12 an hour. But the cost of living is the same. So, wrap your head around that. Now, that being said, There are a lot of jobs that are underpaid and there's a lot of jobs that are overpaid. For instance, you shouldn't make $20 an hour serving burgers when someone wiping asses makes 15 and serving, serving people real health, like medical assistance. They don't make very much money. So they're trying to fight for baristas at Starbucks to make X amount and all they do is make some coffee and these people wiping asses. And the thing is, my wife's a travel nurse, and this is what sucks, is she makes really good money and provides my family even more money on top of my business, and she's just gonna quit whenever she just likes her job, is the dip in nurses makes it to where they have to pay travel nurses more. If you don't think that comes back and hits our insurance premiums over the long haul, you're absolutely out of your fucking mind. Those hospitals are gonna get their money back somehow. So the more money you start giving people, the more things get crazy. People started arguing that, but now they see how bad inflation is, and then they're like, well, I don't know. Like, we tried to tell you if they gave you that many stimuluses, and they started raising pay raises, and they started doing all this, inflation would go fucking nuts. Nobody believed us. Now, look at the housing market, and look at everything else. Smart people that understand the basic economics of supply and demand and how life works, they're normally the successful people. Like, that's how I got really good in the corporate world. That's how I was really good in the Marine Corps. That's how I've been really good in business. And uh, I shouldn't be. I don't look like someone that should be successful. I have hand tats, a fucking face tattoo. My whole body's tatted, my legs, my chest. I got nothing but colorful ass tattoos, right? And I shouldn't be winning. It doesn't make any sense. Per the American standard or whatever they try to set forth is, I shouldn't be winning. The life they sell you about going to college and doing all these things and getting into debt and getting a white picket fence, it's all just a money racket. Like now you're paying on student loans, you're paying on a house that you never really own because of property taxes. And they don't teach you investing in school. They teach you how to maybe write a check if you go to a school that actually has that. And I just decided that I wasn't gonna be a part of the system anymore. I wasn't going to be the person that works until he was 90 years old and still couldn't retire I have a prime example and this is nothing against my dad is he was like well son how are you going to retire dad when you retired you still worked with my brother to get money because retirement wasn't enough so many people they start to give advice but like they didn't even listen they never even did the good thing that they should have did to begin with and like older people they think retirement's like this magic thing like you just get it for free you pay into it so my retirement is going to be my business. I'm going to invest into real estate that brings me money. I've already been doing that. I'm going to invest into the stock market X amount a month. I've already been doing that. I'm going to invest in bigger, making my brand even bigger. I spend $3,000 a month in ads. I've already been doing that. The investments come back and the universe pays you back in dividends. And the 401k, you know how many people had to delay their retirement in 20, 2008? I worked at this place, right? I know this is like a big tangent, but this is like my life in a nutshell. I worked at this place, and they sell you this thing called ESOP, where you have a part of the company. And they're like, oh, you can retire with a million dollars. It crashed by like 35% during all this economic bullshit. So if you had a 
million dollars, now you have 700,000. Now you can't retire. What if the business goes out of business? Where are you gonna get the money from? So either way, whether you call a business, a gamble, a risk, being a normal worker is a risk. That place I left where they laid off second and third shift, they were making $23 to $25 an hour. Highest paying job in the area for low level market, the low level people, lowest paying for the high people. That's where America keeps fucking up. They laid all those people off. They thought they had a secure job. They thought they had a great job making $25 an hour, two minutes from home. I guarantee they're probably close to 16 to 17 now. Then I, the thing is, a lot of them went out and financed vehicles. They were driving around nicer vehicles than I was as a plan manager. I know how to practice delayed gratification. I made $17,000 in the beginning of this month. I still am driving around a Ford Edge right now. I'm not getting a new car until I deem I want to. Until I get as much out of my business as I want to, and then eventually I'll just talk to my accountant like, what's the best time, what should I do, what should I get? I'm going to get something over 6,000 pounds. If anyone knows, that's obviously, a, it could be 100% write off. Certain things that you, so I'm gonna get a big truck, like a, I've already talked about it before, like a Ford Raptor R, something along those lines. I don't have a specific time frame. And then moving to Texas may be on hold right now due to my son's issue. He has some kind of growth up here that has like tripled in size. They thought it was a burn last time he went to the orthodontist. Now it's like this big. It doesn't look amazing. And I know you should stay off Google. Google didn't give us the greatest of answers, but he can't get into the doctor until the 31st of January. So ultimately, I'm probably gonna have to delay the moving part. But that doesn't mean the personal development stops. You guys are still gonna see my life go full, full force. Watch me upgrade my vehicles, watch me upgrade my lifestyle, but still live within my means. Because at the end of the day, living a life not being a slave is ultimately what I wanna do. And I'm not gonna go get out, go right now and get a Lamborghini Urus like some coaches try to do and finance it and pay $3,000 a month and then struggle to pay that every single month. I'm going to pay something with cash or a lot down so I have a minimal payment so that way if all social media crashes, I'm not stressed out, I have money in the bank and we're doing what we need to do to keep rocking and rolling. I am going to drive nice ass shit. I am going to wear nice ass clothes. Like I am going to take care of myself. I'm going to get a bunch more tattoos. I'm going to do a strategical and within marketing reasons because obviously a lot of this like colorful tattoos help a lot for me to stand out I had someone turn around the other day and like hey I recognized you from your chest tattoo because I had a cut off on he's like you're the guy that was putting up flyers for your business right I'm like yeah he's like yeah I noticed because your chest tattoo in your videos you have that so it's just another thing to set myself apart and I love tattoos a lot of military people like tattoos I used to own a tattoo shop I was the I was the investor in it I'd never tattooed really wanted a tattoo but I just might I'm not very artistic I'm sure I could teach myself if I tried hard enough but I mean I'm already this late into my life so fitness is what I really enjoy maybe down the road I'll open up another one for shits and giggles and I'll do tattooing in the back I never tattoo someone really just practice all the time who knows my ultimate goal when I was younger was to open a gym but I opened up two businesses during COVID and then I had I've been bought out of them since then one of the most stressful things is having a fucking brick and mortar, man. When online is 99% profit unless you run ads, brick and mortar is a very stressful thing. COVID prevented us from opening up by six months because we started to open it right when COVID happened. A lot of things went downhill, it took forever. When you go into business with friends, it never works. We agreed on X amount, they tried to pay me less than that. So I just had them buy me back out. It took them like six months to give me back all my investments. That investment was only like five grand though. So it wasn't anything I was hurting on. And then I went into business with another one of my friends. This all happened within the last two years too. I gave him a $30,000 loan. I had a lot of money from the corporate world I saved up and I've always invested it back into my community. I used to donate to the police department. I used to donate to, so I had some money, gave it to him. He started paying me less and less just went south he was spending more than he needed to a lot of things but I won't go into that he's still a decent friend of mine just don't go into business with friends unless you absolutely trust them and I mean even then 
either they, I wouldn't do it. Family, they always say family, you shouldn't do it. I would rather go with like my brother than somebody that I was a friend with because I know my brother would never cut my throat. So take that or leave it. I don't know what your brother's like or your sister's like, but I know my brother would definitely help me in business and he has a very successful business. I don't know why in the past I just didn't go out with him, open some more businesses probably do that in the near future he owns a really big tree service business so it runs in the family i guess we're the only ones that have the, the business gene no one else does everyone else worked on the railroad hard american workers blue collar and uh that's how i did most of my life until i went to the military and got my finance experience i didn't go to the military until i was almost 22 <clears throat> so i've worked a lot of laborious jobs until then like working in steel factories pottery factories making toilets lifting heavy ass weights all the time dirty as fuck worked at this place called Manso plumbing it's actually shut down this year uh you lifted 80 pound toilets all day it was like 110 degrees in there and you had to spray water to keep it humid so i know what it's like to work hard ass labor i don't want my kids ever doing that my kids can go to the military if they want to just to earn that say they did it i don't want them to even do that really i want them to be able to take a piece of whatever business i have going at the time my son turns 13 this year i have five more years I'm gonna buy him a badass car when he turns 16, something nice. That's another thing I hate when parents are like, oh, it's just daddy's money. His dad worked for it, man. Isn't that the ultimate goal? Shouldn't you be mad at your parents for not working hard enough for smoking and drinking and letting their vices not get you nice things? I hate when parents don't give their kids good Christmases and they're like, well, it was hard this year. Like, bro, you smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. You're just a selfish fuck. You put your vices over your kids and you can come and attack me all you want. You're the piece of shit. Not the other way around. Not the parent that worked their ass off to save all their money and worked 16 hour days and buy their kids nice things and spend time with them. Most of those piece of shit parents that smoke cigarettes and drink beer all the time don't even spend time with their kids. So they're not a good parent at all. In any shape way or any way, shape or form. So you can come and attack us who preach this, but we know the truth. We know the truth. I just want to give you guys a little insight of my life, what I've accomplished over the last year and a half, who I am as a person. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. My motto is making men a veteran and strong again through destroying their vices and excuses. Because ultimately, I just want to give better fathers out to the world. And I want to teach veterans with injuries like myself. I have a bad back, no cartilage in my knees, just permanent shin splints pretty much, and torn tendons in my feet, as well as a weird shoulder over here. And I tw I've twisted my ankle like 30,000 times, my left one. I messed it up in the Marine Corps. It's never been right since. I twist it and yank it all the time. It's just very fragile. My body's beat up. But still in shape because I take the diet part serious you can work around injuries you don't have to deadlift you don't have to do certain things you don't have to run you're gonna get in good shape while taking your life serious I have extreme anxiety that's probably why I take life so serious because I'm always trying to keep my mind my mind busy I used to have extreme panic attacks I still have them sometimes but now that I know what they are they're not as scary I went to therapy for a long time for that now I just teach others if you see anxiety and depression it's your body telling you you need to get out of the life you're living mine has relatively gotten better since I stopped stressing over that old life I used to live. I still have to deal with it, but I found a way to cope with it. That's just it. So, that, be, that being said, make sure you like this video. Comment your goals down in the comments so we can win together. Manifest your new life. That's how this all starts. You have to speak it into existence. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And as always, better.